Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with LearnVisualStudio.net. In this lesson, we're going to talk about looping statements in JavaScript. I'm afraid I've kind of already spoiled the fun since we've seen several examples of looping or sometimes called iteration statements in JavaScript. But for the sake of completeness in this lesson, we're going to talk about the while statement, the do while, the for, and the for in statements. And then we'll talk about the differences between them. Uh, all right, so let's go ahead and get started. And we'll start by opening up Notepad and working with our template. All right, and here we'll want to do looping the state. work with our script tag type equals text JavaScript great all right I think we're ready to go here all right so let's first of all start working with an array we learned about arrays in the previous lesson we'll need to loop through something so why not create a playlist of our favorite bands so here we go or at least my favorite bands you can insert your own if you like but you really should listen to these bands they're pretty good And feel free to skip ahead if you want to. All right, so now let's start off with just a simple while statement. And it works something like this. And it's important while you're looking at some of these uh, different iteration statements to see the nuanced differences between each of them. They each serve a purpose. They didn't just create multiple different ways of doing the exact same thing, although the result in this particular case will look exactly the same. Uh, the fact of the matter is that there is a nuanced difference, and so you want to choose the right tool for the job, and understanding what the differences between the tools are goes a long way towards accomplishing that, right? One thing we didn't talk about with regards to arrays in the previous lesson was that you can find out how many elements are in the array by using the length property. So we use the period at the end of playlist, so dot length, similar to what we did with the strings to find out how many characters were in a literal string, right? So I think one thing is the key whenever you're working with iteration statements, many times there's going to be an iterator. The for will work exactly the same. Uh, and so we'll need to initialize that value to zero. And then we want to make sure in this case that we will continue to execute this code until this expression is no longer true. Once it's false, in other words, once I is equal to or greater than playlist.length, which we would expect to be what? Well, there are four items in our array. So once i equals five, then we should break out of this loop. Now, actually, that's a little bit incorrect. Since we're starting at zero and we're incrementing at one at each time, and since each index is zero based, 
this will actually turn out to be four and then we will no longer be true and we'll break out but we'll still be able to access each item each element of our playlist array by again using that iterator that variable that we set up here and calling i throughout our document so each time we loop through we'll increment the iterator by one allowing us to get the next item in the array okay so let's see it in action All right, and so you can see using document.write, we're looping through and printing to screen each of the items in our playlist array. Great. Let's go ahead and comment that out. The next thing we want to look at is a do while. Or we can actually change this and remove this and just make it while well, some result because that will infer that. Okay. All right, so here's the fundamental difference between while and do while. You can see that I'm setting the value of result equal to false. We'll execute this block of code and then say go back and do it one more time as long as some result is true now sent or rather yeah some result is true now since some result is false because we set it up here it'll break out immediately but it will allow us to execute this line this block at least one time let's see it in action okay there you go not exciting in this particular small case but there will be occasions where we want it to execute at least one time and only continue executing if some case is satisfied, if some expression is satisfied. Okay, moving on. And this is probably the most complicated of any of our examples here is the for loop because there's just so many parts to it. But it's also one of them that's used the most, most frequently. Now, as I'm typing this, try to figure out what's going on here before I go to explain it. Okay. So you can see that there is quite a long expression of code here between the open and closing parentheses. And there's three parts to this. As you can see, they're separated by the two semicolons. And the way it's to be understood is uh, to execute and continue to execute this block of code as long as this statement is true. So here we're going to initialize the value of i. We're setting it equal to 0. Then we're going to do this check. As long as this expression is true, execute this line of code. And once you've finished executing it, iterate, uh, increment the iterator by 1. All right? And so that's what allows it to access each item in our playlist array. Let's see it in action. Again, the result will be the same as the while at the very beginning, but the way that this was accomplished was much different. We'll talk about the differences in just a minute. Finally, you saw in the previous lesson how we used the, uh, the for in, so let's do that right now.
All right, so what will happen is we will loop through once for every element inside of this array playlist. There's a lot that's going on under the hood behind the scenes that we don't have to see. Uh, the result is similar to what we've seen up here, but we don't have to worry about creating the iterator or incrementing the iterator. That's all inferred with this keyword in. So for every item I inside of the playlist, for every element I inside of the playlist, go ahead and assign the current I to that number, whether it's zero, one, two, three, how many times you've looped through already, so that we can use that then in the body of our code here to access one of the elements of our array. Let's see it in action. And again, it works, great. All right, so we have four different statements to choose from, while, do while, the for loop, and the for in statement. What are the differences? Well, you choose the right tool for the job, and it depends really what you want to do. Do you need to iterate through an entire array? Then you would probably want to use the for in. I think that's the easiest, most obvious syntax. Um, do you need to iterate through a block of code a preset number of times or control the manner in which the iteration happens? Then you probably want to use the for loop. Uh, we can, for example, start at the playlist dot length and as long as I is greater and we can decrement it. I think something, if that doesn't work just off the top of my head, something like it would work. So we go in reverse order. Let's see if we can make that work. Uh, all right, and after a few passes, you can see I came up with the right formula to go back uh, backwards through uh, our, our playlist. And so that's just another a feature of the for loop as opposed to the for in. I can take control of how the iteration goes. I can also step through uh, and play every other item or d uh, display every other item in the playlist uh, because I have more control over how things are iterated, how things are initialized, and so on, okay? Do you need to iterate through an indeterminate number of times based on some logic that's you know inside of the body of the loop itself? then you probably either want to use the while statement or the do while. Uh, the do while we've already seen, it'll at least execute the, uh, the passage of code or the block of code one time. All right, so those are your four different looping statements that are available in JavaScript. Uh, hopefully now some of those previous exercises, if you were to go back and look at them, if they didn't make a lot of sense before, they should make sense now that we've talked about looping and arrays. All right, so let's continue pushing forward, doing great. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Mm -hmm.